Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for February 2021. And I'm going to break it to you now. It's not the most exciting month for astronomical events, but the winter night sky is a thing of beauty in itself. As you can see behind me right now, plenty of bright stars, plenty to discover and plenty to photograph. But coming up this month, Mars approaches Pleiades. We have plenty of off-season Milky Way action to be had. It's a good time of year to photograph the Rosette Nebula. And it's also a good time of year to photograph the Beehive Cluster in Cancer. And we also have some exciting news about a newly discovered comet. So make sure you stick around for that. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of topics such as graphic design, photography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on Nightscapes, an introduction to all things landscape astrophotography. Or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes, which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astrophotographs with newfound knowledge. I've been using Skillshare for over two years now and making use of their courses on freelancing, running a business, but also Photoshop, logo design and animation classes that help me create the introduction clip to this series. So if you want to try Skillshare Premium for yourself and get access to all of those courses, the first 1000 people to click the link in the video description will get a completely free trial of Skillshare Premium for a limited time. Starting in the Northern Hemisphere, where the nights are still long and Northern Light season is in full swing. Facing north towards the circumpolar constellations, Ursa Major starts the night in the northeast, rising higher into the sky as the night goes on. Cassiopeia is found high in the northwest and makes its way closer to the horizon as the night goes on. And you'll see the great square of Pegasus setting in the west as well. It's here where we have a faint section of the Milky Way stretching from Cygnus through Cepheus and up to Cassiopeia. So you will need dark skies in your northwest to capture this and techniques like tracking and stacking will help unveil a little bit better detail. You'll also notice Andromeda, the spiral galaxy to the left of the Milky Way band and as it is five times the size of the moon's apparent diameter, it will even appear in your wide angle images. Facing south and as darkness falls, the winter circle or winter hexagon dominates the skies. So the constellations Orion, Canis Major and Minor, Gemini, Auriga and Taurus. And as the night goes on, the asterism drops down to the western horizon, opening up photographic opportunities to include a good foreground. But rolling back to the evening skies, there's a couple of good star tracker targets this month. In Monoceros, there's the bright Rosette Nebula, a H2 region located one end of a giant molecular cloud. The open cluster NGC 2244 in the centre is made up of stars that have been formed from the nebula's matter. Next to that is the fainter Cone Nebula, another H2 region, and a bit more of a difficult target because it's so faint, but it's a target that is good for astro-modified cameras that have higher sensitivity in hydrogen alpha emissions. Also, if we zoom into the constellation Cancer, there is also the Beehive Cluster, also known as Praesipa, which can be a nice beginner target and can even be photographed when the moon is in the sky. Facing east, you'll notice Leo the Lion rising higher and higher, a sign that spring is just around the corner. And as we approach the dawn skies, you'll notice signs of the Milky Way core returning. Although it's very difficult to photograph this month, unless you're at latitudes close to the equator or in the Southern Hemisphere. So I shall talk about it more for the Northern Hemisphere in next month's video. As for planets, Mars is the only readily visible one of the naked eye planets this month. It starts high in the south as darkness falls and makes its way down to set on the northwestern horizon around 2 a.m. local time. It continues to fade this month, starting the month at magnitude 0.46 and ending the month at 0.9. As such, there's not many good conjunctions or close approaches this month, but on the 18th and 19th, the first quarter moon passes Mars and it'll also be nearby Pleiades, the open star cluster, and Aldebaran, which is surrounded by Hyades, another star cluster. 
On to the southern hemisphere now, where the nights are increasing in length, and if we face south towards the circumpolar constellations, as darkness falls, the large Magellanic Cloud is found high in the sky, and as the night goes on, it, along with the small Magellanic Cloud, drops lower to the horizon, whereas the Crux and Carina region of the Milky Way climb higher and higher. Facing north and the southern summer circle asterism dominates the evening skies and it makes its way down to the western horizon as the night goes on. This opens up some really interesting opportunities to capture the asterism with some nice foreground interest. But rolling back to the evening skies, there's a couple of good star tracker targets this month. In Monoceros, there's the bright Rosette Nebula, a H2 region located near one end of a giant molecular cloud. The open star cluster, NGC 2244, found in the center, is made up of stars that have formed from the nebula's matter. Next to that is the fainter Cone Nebula, another H2 region, but it's a lot fainter and it would be a lot better photographed with an astro-modified camera, which has higher sensitivity to hydrogen alpha emissions. Also, if we zoom into the constellation Cancer, you will find the Beehive Cluster, also known as Praecipe. This can be photographed with astro-modified cameras, all stock cameras, and can even be photographed when the moon is in the sky. Facing east, you'll notice Leo the lion rising higher and higher, a sign that autumn is just around the corner for the southern hemisphere. And as we approach dawn, you'll notice the Milky Way core returning, officially opening Milky Way core season. You guys in the southern hemisphere get a month head start against those of us in the northern hemisphere. It's also a good time to do a Milky Way panorama with the core in the southeast and the rest of the Milky Way stretching across the sky. As for planets, Mars starts high in the northwest as darkness falls and then makes its way down to set on the northwest horizon. It continues to fade this month, starting the month at magnitude 0.4 and ending the month at 0.9. During the latter half of the month you can also spot Saturn, Mercury and Jupiter in the morning twilight as well though it will certainly help to have a clear view of the horizon. Sadly, there's not many conjunctions or close approaches to mention this month, but on the 18th, 19th and 20th, the first quarter moon passes Mars, Pleiades, the open star cluster, and Aldebaran, which is within Hyades, another star cluster. As for the special events this month, apart from cats, I've got nothing for you. I told you it's not the most exciting of months, but I do have some exciting news about a newly discovered comet. Last month, on January the 3rd, Gregory Leonard, an astronomer at the Mount Lemmon Observatory in Arizona, discovered a comet which now bears his name. C 2021 A1 Leonard. It's still pretty far away. It's in between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars, but day by day it's getting closer to Earth and closer to the Sun. It reaches perigee, its closest approach to the sun, on January the 3rd, 2022, but it reaches its closest approach to Earth on December the 12th of this year. Now, NASA predict that it might reach magnitude five or magnitude four, the lower the better, the lower the brighter, with magnitude six being the limit for naked eye visibility. So we're looking at a potential naked eye visible comet and Professional astronomers have already started photographing the comet and it's showing a tail. So fingers crossed we'll have a nice bright comet with a tail for Christmas this year. And very interestingly this comet has a hyperbolic trajectory so as it loops around the sun instead of orbiting the sun and coming back in a few hundred or a few thousand years it's going to loop around the sun and then be flung into outer space. So this is our only chance to see this comet. Now Getting excited for a comet is always risky because quite often there are big expectations for a comet and everything seems perfect and they just fizzle out and become nothing and don't live up to their expectations like we saw with Comet Kautek in 1973. But then other times comets can come unexpectedly and they can become way brighter than we predicted like we saw with Comet Neowise last year. But I'm super excited to see how this comet develops over the course of this year. And fingers crossed, we have a nice Christmas surprise. I'll put some links in the video description down below for some more information. But I'll also keep you guys updated every month in these videos, what's in the night sky. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 
hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on these videos as well. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject to photograph and people upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens, what's in the night sky. I then pick my favourite three images of the month to win a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a What's in the Night Sky t-shirt. And first place wins a photo view photography guidebook of their choice. Last month's challenge was images taken with a star tracker. And if you haven't already, check out my latest video where I photograph a few deep space targets within the constellation Orion. Picking three winners was certainly difficult this month. There were so many amazing entries, so be sure to go and check out the hashtag Wittens and connect with other night sky lovers. But in third place was this image by Finks Photography, who has managed to blend a tracked image with an aligned foreground very nicely. There's some beautiful colour and detail in Barnard's loop, and also the flame and horsehead nebulae, and I love the foreground interest too. Even though it's just a simple wooden hut, there's something about it that feels really alien and otherworldly. So, great job to Finks, you win my Lightroom presets. In second place was this image by Astro Exploring of the Rosette Nebula. A very clean image after three hours of exposure. And it's just a really nice, soft, yet detailed feel about the image that I love. So, great job on the processing of this image, and congrats on winning a t-shirt. And in first place was Tim White with this stunning image of the Whirlpool Galaxy M51. And it was captured over four nights, producing a beautifully clean image with great details and the colours are really nicely balanced. So well done to Tim for winning a photo view book of his choice. This month, we don't really have many special events this month, so I'm going to challenge you guys to some Winter Milky Way. So for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere who will have a chance to photograph the core this month, those images won't count. Just winter sections of the Milky Way, whether that's the region that runs through the Winter Circle, or the Cygnus region, or the Cassiopeia region, just anything other than the core. Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on my videos. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. I need to go. I gotta edit this video. Do you wanna edit this video? Didn't think so.